Hello, welcome to my channel. In case you are new to my channel, this is Obak Tutors, an educational YouTuber based in Yenegua, Nigeria. In case you are a returning subscriber, thank you and welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking at basic programming in basic. Now, uh, before now, we are told to download our basic compiler in our previous video. So in case you have downloaded your basic um, interpreter, mine is on the screen, you can see it over here. So just double click to open the interpreter, that's the interface. Close this pop-up, that's the interface we have. In case you install your interpreter and you don't know where you see that or there is no shortcut icon on your desktop, kindly come to the search bar and type the name. Mine is just basic. You can see just basic it has come up. You double click on it. You can get that again. And that comes up. In case also you are using the mobile version, maybe you are using basic interpreter on your mobile version. You can use your mobile version as well. Um, open it up and code with us as we go along. Now in this interface, we have the file menu, the edit, run, setup, and help. Also, under the file, we have the new file. What the new file does is help us to open a new template for a new project, for a new code. So each time you want to write a new code, you just come and click on this um, icon. We use this to, to open up an existing program for modification or for improvements. We use this for opening up any product that we saw on your screen. We use this for the save. Um, and also, I will have a call to the base. We have this button for run for execution. After typing your code, they expected to execute the code. So we use this to for execution of the code to see the output of the written code. So we also have this to, to increase the size or the font of our programming of the code that we are writing. All right, for us to start a new code, we click on the new file, it gives you a blank sheet. If you recall in our last video, we were introduced to some basic statements like when, um, input, CLS, let, go to statement, end statement, and so on and so forth. So basically, if, we, if you recall, we said that we use the REM statement to add to add comment to our code to add the ability to the user. We use the CLS to clear the screen in case, that, in case there's an, an existing running code on that screen. So we use the CLS to clear the screen to enable us to only see the output of the current execute, executing code. We also talk about the let statement, it's an assignment statement that helps us to assign value to a variable. We also talk about the go to statement, go to statement helps us to transfer control within part of the um, program. For example, we will recall that we might have a decision, a condition that if, if a condition is met, go to the social part of the program. If it's not met, go to the social part of the program. So that's what go to statement helps us to do. Also, we have the, the end statement that helps us signify the end of the statement. Now, we also have the input statement that help us to get input from the user or from the keyboard. So as we progress in this class, we will see how various, how these various statements are being used. So let us try to write a simple basic program, a program that will print hello. Just all the program will do just to print hello class to the screen. So let's start. Please know that a basic uses line numbering or labels for transferring of controls can be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 10, 20, 30, 40, or 100, 200, 300, whatever you want to use. So let me use 10, 20, 30, 40. All right. So 10, the first thing is to clear the screen. In case there's an existing running program on the code, we have 20. We use RAM statement, which is used to add comment. So a comment will add now is what our code is doing. A program to display hello. So 30. We were told that we were told that we use the print statement to display to the screen. 
And it's important for us to note that whatever we want to display to the screen must be placed under double quote. Must be placed under double quote. We want to print, say, hello class. Must be under double quote. Then what else we want to do? That just the end. Then we end with line numbering, which is 40, to end our code. So this program is a simple program that helps us to display hello class to the screen. So let's execute. Like I said, after writing your code, you come and place here to execute your code. So we click wow. You can see the output of the code saying hello class. So that is what the program is doing. Clear the screen, run hello class. So that's for that. Very simple, as you can see. As we want to print um, another example, to print your name, hello, or just print um, Mr. Chooks. Like I said, to write a new code, you click on this new file button. Okay, do you want to save? Yes, if you want to save your code, you click save. You save your code. Type with any name, maybe say hello, hello code, and you save it. Then it gives you a new blank. So let's start. 10, call it clear the screen. 20, or you say 11, you can use 11 if you want. Ren, a statement, a program to display my name. Then 12, 12 you can say print Mr. Chooks. Then 13 we say end. So this program is to help us to print the name Mr. Chooks on the screen. So if we run this, you can see, wow. Line 12 is highlighted, signifying an error on the code. What might be the error? Oh, I've seen the error. The error is that we are told that whatever you want to display to the screen or must be placed inside double quotes. So we didn't place inside a double quote and we have violated the syntax for print. For the print, syntax simply states that print followed by whatever you want to print inside a double quote. So let's try to run again. Wow, my chooks. Wow, as an, as an error, let's change my chooks to Mr. Chooks. Let's run again. So we have Mr. Chooks, as you can see on the screen. I think okay, let's do another little modification to the program. Like, program will say, My name is before Mr. Chooks. So let's go down to line before line 12 just call it 12 we'll remember later print my name is double quote then we run there's an error in line 4 or 5 you can see line 4 or 5 now let's read the warning. Wrong time error. 12 label has multiple definition. It simply means that the label number 12 has been used multiple times, which ought not to be. So it's supposed to be a unique, each line of course will have a unique uh, label. So you can see line three and four is having um, 12, 12. So we have to go back to number 13. Then we have, 14. Now, make sure that all unique, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so that all unique. So you run your code. Wow, my name is Mr. Chooks. That's awesome. So you can always modify your code um, to whatever level you want it to be. You can add, um, my name is Mr. Chooks. 
how are you doing today? Let's see again. Let's go down and say 14 print. How or say hope you are staying. Hope you are staying safe. So let's remember to change your number to 15. So let's run. We can see. My name is Mr. Chooks. Hope you are staying safe. So you can see how the print statement, REM statement, CLS statement, and end statement is being used. If you watch at every execution, we are not seeing the previous um, output. We are seeing only the current output because of the presence of this clear the screen on the beginning of the code. The REM tells us what the code is doing. It is not executable. It's just to help with the ability. They will talk about the print helps us to display to the screen. We can solve the first use of print. My name is print Mr. Chokes, print. Hope you are staying safe. Then the end statement signifies the end of the code. Now, if you look at this code, um, a program to display my name. Assuming we want to display the name of the entire class, this becomes difficult for us to achieve. Does that mean that we will write this code for, assuming we have 200, 200, 200 students in class, that means we will write the code and change the name 200 times? No. We should be able to make our, our code a, in a robust manner that it will be dynamic to the point that it prompts the user to input the name before printing. Now, that would that lead us to another uh, basic statement that is input, which we will discuss in our previous video. Input helps us to get um, data from the user or from the, from, or from the keyboard. So by so doing, we will write the code in a way that before it will display the name, you have to type the name for it to display. So whatever name you impute, it will display. Like you now say, my name is, whatever you impute will be the name that will be on the screen. So in our next video, we'll be seeing how we can modify this code that displays name to be more robust and dynamic to the point that it prompts you to change the name by yourself. So that will be what we'll consider in our next video. Please stay tuned. Please, in case you have not subscribed to our channel, please do well to subscribe to our channel. That's the, that's the red button down the video. In case you are, in case you are not, in case you want to get new um, notifications about new videos on our channel, please do well to click on the bell button close to the subscription button. Please don't forget to give our video a thumbs up and do well to drop your lovely comments. We'll be glad to have them. Thank you for viewing.